Amazing. Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome if you're joining us. So great to see everyone. Hello. Amazing. You will see, you're on mute everyone, but hi, so good to have everyone here. Look at everyone joining Joanna. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so good. We're going to have so much fun. We are indeed. Look, um, we'd love you to have video on. We love being able to interact with you all um, here. You will notice you're on mute. You don't have to have your video on, completely up to you, but um, you know, you're welcome to have that on today. So, so look, um, what we're going to be doing is just to start off while people gather, I would love everyone to share in the chat where you are and what you do, right? Where you are in the world and what you do. What, what is it that you do creatively? We'd love to hear. If you just want to share that in the chat, just as we have a few more people gathering with us today. So, so good as everyone's joining in. Now, I will, I will mention, I'm actually in Mexico City right now for, for two months, um, which is fantastic. I, I travel full time with my, my business, um, which means I get to hang out in interesting places. Um, I do spend a lot of time in North America um, and Europe primarily, but you're probably already ca catching uh, my crazy accent. Where, where are you, Joanna? Uh, I'm in Los Angeles. There we go. I love it. So, Keep sharing, team, as we get underway. Just sharing where you are in the world and what you do, what you do creatively. Awesome. I love it. Ooh, DC, I love it. Fun employed. I love that, Ashley. Working contract business development <laughs> marketing. Very cool. Nice. Ontario, Canada, graphic design illustration. I love that. Orange County, Lisa. Very cool. This is great. Canada, yeah, there we cool. go. Ooh, amazing. <laughs> Annie in Fort Collins. Hey, Annie. So, so good. Love that. Saskatoon. Hey, Andrew. Fantastic. I love it. So good. Look, if you're just joining us, we're just sharing in the chat where you are in the world and what you do. We're going to get underway. So what we'll do to get started, I'm going to be handing over to Joanna so she can get us underway with the webinar with a bit of an introduction first. Awesome. Over awesome. to you. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Joanna Munoz. I'm a lettering artist, illustrator, educator, and author. I'm based in Los Angeles, and I run my own studio called Wink and Wonder. So I started Wink and Wonder in 2013. I have a degree in graphic design. At the time, I was working for a production agency, and I was designing websites for all the film studios, which was super cool. But I was missing kind of that tactile thing. So I started Wink and Wonder. I was going to make it a greeting card company. Ended up um, teaching myself calligraphy in 2013 and sharing my process online and eventually found hand lettering. So I got my first client in 2014. So a year after I started Wink and Wonder, they tried to pay me an exposure, but I got them to pay me. So we can talk about that later. And over the years, I just gotten more clients, the more I shared work online. So in 2018, a publisher reached out to me and asked me to write a book on hand lettering, which I did. In 2019, I started teaching workshops and doing live lettering events, which was super fun. And things were going great. And I totally thought I could support myself. So I decided to go full-time freelance um, Thanksgiving of 2019. And then COVID hit. So surprise, um, for the next two years, I had to figure out what to do with my business. And then I wanted to um, learn how to really run my business like a business. So even though I've had this huge roster of clients, I did a logo for Jojo Siwa and Nickelodeon. I did events for Michael Kors, PayPal, HBO, Nike, done stuff for Microsoft and Pottery Barn. I still like, I'm really good as an artist, but I didn't understand how to run my business like a business. But I wanted a coach that understood creatives and not just like this weird, like Instagram coach, life coach sort of thing. So I asked the universe to send me a coach. I didn't know how I was going to find them. And I had been following Jess Miller's work on Instagram and she had had a webinar with Logan. So I watched the replay on YouTube and Logan said one thing in that webinar that really stuck with me, which is like, you know, he understood that artists love doing creative things and all sorts of creative, creative things. But we often forget to focus on a thing that really works for us. And that was totally me. So I set up a call with him um, and I was super excited when I got on the first call, really excited when I got on the second call. And for me, that's how I know that something is aligned and it's something that I want to do. So since then, we've been working together fall of last year. Um, I have really focused on the business aspect and understanding all the stuff, getting out of my own way when it comes to business. So since working with him, you know, my, my income has grown. I've hit $7,000, $8,000 months. 
he's also taught me how to project into the future because the way I did freelance was I was just taking jobs as they came and I wasn't planning for the future. So that's been a really huge thing that um, I've learned since working with Logan. And yeah, now I know what the numbers mean and how to how to plan for um, things that happen. Um, maybe not take two months off when I hit a $10,000 month because then I'm not really planning for myself. But those are all the little things in business that um, he really helped me learn. And I'm so excited you guys are here. I'm an open book. I know Logan is. So I'm going to let him introduce himself. Amazing. Thank you so, so much, Joanna. Look, just excited to be here with everyone and connecting with new people today as well and familiar faces too. So look, I'm just going to give a quick intro and then we're going to be diving straight into our awesome workshop we've got planned for today. So um, look, Logan, my background is that I am from New Zealand and I ran my own creative business for 11 years. I was in the live event space in New Zealand. So yes, I'm originally, or well, I still am a New Zealander, um, affectionately known as Kiwis, if you hadn't heard that term. Um, it's because of the Kiwi bird, not because of the Kiwi fruit, right? It's a flightless endangered bird in New Zealand. So there we go, a bit of a fun fact for today. Um, look, yeah, had my had my own business for 11 years. Early on in having that creative business, I also did my entrepreneurship masters. So I basically went and learned a lot more about business. And that ended me on, a, well, that ended taking me on a journey of creative entrepreneurship and actually teaching and helping others. So early on in the years of running my own creative business, I then got involved in teaching, primarily with universities right up to a master's level, also some public programs as well, to really help creative people to take their business to the next level. Now, things evolved and changed over the years, and then eventually when I sold that uh, creative business, I went full-time into the coaching space to help visual creative to grow and doing that full-time. So yes, I do travel full-time, as I've mentioned, usually spending one to two months in each place, currently in Mexico City, um, but mostly between sort of North America or Americas and Europe primarily. And of course, I get a bit of time in New Zealand to, to see family and all those good things too. So, so look, the people that we work with kind of are broken into three groups. Uh, group one are like, hey, I, you know, I want to get going. I want to get moving. I'm right at the start of the journey. Maybe I've got a day job. Maybe I've done a little bit of work, creative work on the side and been paid for it, but I want to turn this into a proper business. So that's kind of group one. Group two are like, hey, I'm already running a business. I've been doing this for you know six months, 12 months, several years even, and I really want to take it further. I want to have more consistency. I want to have less burnout. I want to be more creative. I want to take things to be more regular. So that's kind of group two we work with. Group three are the people that are like, hey, I've got like, 40,000 followers, 100,000 followers. So about 10% of people we work with have those big followings, obviously including Joanne himself and also Jess Miller, as mentioned. So look, most people, we don't, we, we don't necessarily have those big followings, but we have work with some people that do. So as a bit of an overview, the other thing I'll briefly mention is that I run retreats as well. Um, it's a super fun part of what I do. Um, a good friend of mine, Kat Coke, some of you might have heard of. Um, we have our retreat coming up in Morocco. Um, very, very soon, actually the end of next month, which is awesome. The entrepreneur retreats. Last year we did Spain, year before France, and we're always working on something new there as well. So there we go. So that's the quick overview. Look, I'm super excited about jumping into things. So just before we get started on the topic, topic, I'm going to share with you that I'm, I'm doing three giveaway, uh, giveaway coaching calls. What I'm going to do is I'm going to post that link into the chat right now. If that's interesting for you to jump on a, uh, jump on a 30 minute coaching call, freebie coaching call with me, fill in the survey. It takes five to 10 minutes. I'm going to give away three of them to three, three people that will choose. Also, we're going to be giving away some extra calls to Paul from my team, who's the creative business specialist as well. So that's something we're able to do too, is get, if you don't get one of the calls with me, we'll get you on a call um, perhaps with him as well. So we'll give away a few of those calls too. So look, um, well, I'll share it again at the end and we'll share it in notes and in the email afterwards too. But if this is something where you'd love to jump on a one-on-one -on -one call, absolutely fill that in and we'd love to hear where you're at. And even just filling it in, people get a lot of insight from that too. Awesome. Okay, let's jump into it. So um, just honestly, super excited about sharing this topic, because this is something that a lot of people struggle with. So the topic we decided on was really around taking action in your creative business. It's something that we see with our clients, people struggle with a lot is, yes, do the things and okay, there's, you know, work to be done. There's a big checklist of stuff to tick off, whether you're starting, whether you're growing, whatever stage you're at, and that could be super overwhelming. It can be hard. We can be like, I know I need to post on Instagram. And we might even have our clients. Some of them say like, I will just make sure I get it done. And we talk to them a week later 
and maybe they haven't done it. And it's not as simple as just forcing ourselves to do something. We've got to dig into the stuff behind that. So look, we thought we'd run a workshop really around this. There's going to be a lot of mindset stuff we're going to run through. Use the chat. Any comments you want to check out in the chat? Uh, any comments you want to put in the chat? Thoughts, ideas, those good things? Buy them in the chat. We always love seeing that as well. Um, also, what we're going to do towards the end is we're going to do a Q&A. It's an open book. Anything you want to ask myself or Joanna about the topic or in general about creative business, happy to fire that in. So we'll do the Q&A at the end. So just hold on to your questions for now. We did have, I think, four or five questions pre-submitted. So we'll make sure we cover those ones first and we'll see how we do for time for the rest. Awesome. All right. I think we should dig in. What do you reckon, Joanna? Should we jump into the topic? I'm so excited. Let's go. Awesome. Okay, cool. So look, the first thing I'm going to take you through is this idea of becoming your successful self. Becoming your successful self. What does that really mean? This is a really interesting idea, which basically says you need to be the person you want to be now rather than wait. Right? Like That doesn't make sense. What are you talking about, Logan? So let, let's kind of break that down further. If you think about where you want to go, let's say, Logan, I want to build a business that is earning 10K per month, right? $10,000 per month, or it could be more than that. Or it could be, I want to have a business that is doing these sorts of creative things. Or maybe it's a 5K month, whatever that is. What you then do is you think about, if I was that person, if I was a person that was earning five to 10K every month, how would I behave in the world? How would I live? What would I do? What time would I get up in the morning? How would I spend my days? How often would I... Uh, do meditation or go to yoga or have a massage, all those self-care things, right? It's really interesting when you do this activity because what you often find is those things that you can imagine you would need to be at that point, you can do some of them now. So this is where you can step into that person to get you there. Those are the things, right? So, so we talk about maybe it's like, well, some people are like, well, if I was earning you know, $10,000 a month, I can imagine that I'd probably get up at this time every morning. Now, I'm not saying you need to get up at 4 or 5 a.m., right? Some people do, that's fine. You might say, I'm going to get up at 7 a.m. every morning. And first thing I'm going to do is make a plan for the day because that's what a person who would be earning that amount of money would do. That's my version of it. You can do that now. The perfect action says, it doesn't need to be perfect right now, but you can start doing some of these things now. So that's this idea of actually becoming your successful self and the, activity, the activities, the habits, the things you can do now they're going to help you get there, right? So this is about how you interact with the world. You can do some of these things now. And you might say, well, I can't do all of these things, Logan, right? If I was earning, you know, 10K per month, maybe I would really be able to lean in and afford to invest in myself around self-care. Have a massage every week. You might be like, I can't really afford to do that right now. But maybe you could do something aligned with that. Have a massage every one month or two months. Right? Or what is something else that's a self-care thing that you could do? Go for a walk every day. Right? What are the things that someone who is successful would do and what can you do already? I'd love to hear your thoughts off the bat of this, Joanna, and just you know, really reflecting and, and hearing what comes up when we talk about this thing around uh, you know, growth and becoming your successful self. Yeah, um, I, you know, that phrase like fake it till you make it, everyone gets that, but I don't really believe in that because then you're just pretending to be this thing that you don't know how to like get to. And and that's why we decided on like how to be your successful self, because it is about the daily habits that Logan was talking about. And I really encourage you guys to like spend 30 minutes with a notebook and just write it down, like write down who that person is that you want to become, what their day looks like, like start from the morning, what time do they get up and just walk through the day step by step and then see where you can sort of like slot yourself in. And what's really great about Logan is that he encourages people to put these ideas into action. And I'm really good at like understanding concepts. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I get it. Successful self, cool, cool. But like, I don't do the, I don't, I did not used to do the work of like sitting down with myself, really thinking through it, writing out the process and then taking those actionable items and actually doing the work because in our head, Someone successful, it's just like this huge thing that we don't understand how to get to. But if we break it down into little pieces, it's much more attainable. And then a year from now, you can check in with yourself and say, okay, well, what does this successful self look like now? Am I that person already? Are there other things that I can do? And it's just really helpful in terms of not just business, but like in your life. Like what, what, is, what is a successful person look like when they're 
um, interacting with people or networking. And at the very like base level, when people say, oh, well, I don't know how to be a lettering artist. When Logan was talking, I was just thinking like, I was doing this before I even realized I was doing it. I was lettering every day. Nothing was gonna stop me from doing hand lettering because I loved it so much. And so looking back, I was already putting into place the, the habits that I needed to become a lettering artist. So if your question is, well, how do I get into lettering? Well, you gotta start lettering. So at the very base level, who is it that you want to become? What habits are attached to that? And then how can you go from there? I love it. I think it's so powerful. And you know, I think that this actually is such a nice wind into the next one we're going to talk about, which is taking inspired action, right? And I think what's really interesting here, even the stuff we've talked about, it's very easy for an activity like this to become very overwhelming because you're like, you're telling, like you're only loading, you're telling, you know, I have to do all of these things now. It's like, no, like pick one thing, right? Take that inspired action, use that to inspire you to actually do something here. Now, that might just be, right, go and do 10 minutes of yoga because I feel like that's what a successful person or a successful version of myself would do. Now, by the way, I'm not saying you have to go and take up yoga right now. That's just an example. But, you know, think about what is something that's very tangible that is inspired action based off what you really want. And, you know, we talk a lot about in our programs as well, this idea of imperfect action, right? Taking inspired action versus perfect action. And perfection is something that people struggle with. We're going to dive into it a little bit more in the workshop as well later on. But this idea of perfect action can really prevent you from moving forward. So what we're really encouraging you to do is taking this inspired action. This actually means you're writing out your goals. You're getting clear on that. You're having affirmations. But then once you've got those things, you've then got the actions that come off them. Right? We can all have a list of stuff we could do for our creative business, like to grow it, to start it, whatever that is. But like, is that linked to the goals that we have? Is that linked to what we really want? Well, let's take it right back and dial that in first. So that's where goals are super important. I, I notice most people not super clear on what they actually want, not super clear on their goals. Right, so it's something we, we obviously dive into in our programs as well. But the, the idea is goals are great, getting them down is good. Affirmations, we love that, but taking it further as well into that inspired action. Even those little actions that are not perfect, right? Yeah, perfect would be like going and doing an hour of yoga because that's going to make me feel energized and good for my day ahead to run my business. Well, it's full on if you've never done yoga before or you've barely done it. Like, go and do it for five minutes. Go, like, go sit on the yoga mat and do some stretching. Right? That is what is inspired action is about. It's a start and avoiding that perfection as well. So, you know, Jonah, we, we've talked about this stuff a lot, you know, you know, during the coaching as well. And, and, you know, love to hear your thoughts around this. Like when we talk about inspired action and your reflections on that as well. Yes. So I, and Logan knows this about me, I'm super like universe woo-woo sort of person. So I will, if I can, slot in some, some universal concepts. What I've learned is you really have to focus on your emotions and how you feel when you do things, because when you're inspired to do something, you have that energy of like excitement and momentum behind it. And then it doesn't necessarily feel like work, right? So what I do is when I have a list of things to do for my business or for the day or for clients, I write everything down on a piece of paper. And this also works for like house chores and life in general, write everything down on the piece of paper to the like tiniest little thing that has to get done. And just look at it and just find the thing that excites you the most, even if it's like, put my laundry away. And then you'll check that off, go back to your list and do the next thing. And you'll start to realize like that momentum will carry you through your list and it'll go through a lot faster. So what we were, what most people were raised on is like, you know, hustle and grind, like do the dirty work and just like tough it out. And that, that is just not the approach that I would recommend or that I've found has worked for myself. So Yes, get stuff done. Um, I, when I first started working with Logan, I was like, oh, the universe will take care of everything, which is also not the way to go. That's the other end of the pendulum that does not work. Um, but doing the things that align with you and give you energy and inspiration to do the next thing, to do the next thing, and kind of like use that snowball effect to get you going because you are the one who's in charge of your business. No one else is going to do it for you. No one's, I mean, in theory, no one else is going to clean your house or do the dishes. So you are the one that has to live your life and do all of these things, but you can do it in a way that's more like in flow with the energy that that's around us. Instead of just kind of like banging your head against the wall and trying to like make stuff work that you're just not, not excited for. So going about it a much easier 
way more chill way than than what we were raised to believe. I love that. I think, you know, that idea of like what we're raised to believe is so, so powerful. And, you know, something we talk about is this idea of limiting beliefs and the, the things that we know or think to be true and actually challenging them. And actually, it's something we see a lot during our programs is the mindset growth that people need to go through, the ways they view themselves, their business, those sorts of things as well. And even the ways they view getting stuff done, right? So this next one's going to be kind of an interesting one. We're going to kind of go to the other end, which is yes, taking inspired action, but also you've still got to grow through discomfort. So sometimes what we see is, you know, and, and there's some, once again, semantics here, but we kind of see this phrase of like, doing this thing doesn't resonate with me. And like, like I think that has value. That idea has value of being like, oh, this doesn't resonate with me. The strategy is action, this thing or building my business in that way. Like that's totally fine in some instances. What we sometimes see, and actually what we frequently see is it's a way of avoiding the uncomfortable things. This thing's going to be hard. It's new. I'm scared. I'm, I've never done it before. Therefore, it doesn't feel comfortable. Therefore, I don't feel like that resonates with me. It's like, wait a minute. You've got to grow through the uncomfortable stuff as well. So in your business, there's going to have to be stuff where you're going to get outside of your comfort zone. <laughs> Just saw you in chat there, Joanna. Yeah, totally. And, and I think, you know, this is a really interesting thing here is like, it's this, this idea of actually going, you know what? Like there's going to be stuff that you need to do to grow that you're not going to be crazy comfortable with. Like there's a balance here. We're not saying jump completely outside of your comfort zone and go completely crazy, do the, the thing that you would never think you could do. Well, there's a limit to that because fear will get too far in your way. So when we talk about getting outside of your comfort zone and, and working through this, 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 the discomforts, dip your toe in first. Right? We sometimes think about the comfort zone as a circle. It's like, rather than like jumping out of the circle, like just put, stick your hand out there and like start, start these things that feel uncomfortable, but start taking action within them anyway. We do a whole lot of things like break it down further, right? Like most people we work with are terrified about the idea of sending cold emails. Right, once again, don't worry, not everyone has to do that, but that's a strategy you can use. Most people feel super ick about sending cold emails. Yuck, it feels salesy, it feels disgusting and all those things. But actually, what can we do to actually grow through that discomfort? Because we also know this is the way you can build your business. And you can do it in an authentic way as well. Right, so I think this is a really interesting one. I mean, love what you shared in the chat there, Joanna. What else comes up around this? And love to hear your thoughts around this idea of going through it. Yeah, when we were talking about the talking points for this webinar and the talking point of, does it not really resonate? I was like, oh man, you're just absolutely calling me out on something I said. So um, I had, I Logan had suggested something. I don't even know what it was anymore. And I thought about it for like two seconds. And I was like, mm, that doesn't resonate. And because he knows that I have this like spiritual background, he was like, okay, well, that doesn't, that doesn't resonate, that it doesn't resonate with you. It, it screams more anxiety than it does, like actually not aligning with who I am and what I want to do for my business. And I, I thought about it and what he said, and he was absolutely right. Like I, I was scared because I didn't know the steps because I hadn't given myself the time to think through the steps and take it bit by bit. I just went from like zero to 60. And I thought, oh, well, that's too hard. I don't know how to do it. I don't want to do it right now. I'm not ready. And it, it really, it actually, it woke me up because now anytime I have that like anxious feeling of something new that I'm, I haven't done before and I don't really understand how to do it and my nature is to do it perfectly, I stop and think, okay, well, is this really what I don't want to do and it doesn't resonate or am I just anxious because I don't know how to do it, but I can learn. So that was really um, a game changer for me. And, you know, some days were like, I had to film something the other day for this workshop and I've never filmed anything before in my own home. Like I usually have, I've been like flown out to studios. So for me to do it myself, I was like, oh, I want to do this. But I knew the first step was I just need to set up my workspace and then I just need to set up the camera. So it, like, I took a day to set up the workspace. I took a day to set up the camera. I took like 30 minutes to do an intro and it was trash and I did it about 37 times. But just taking those steps and then getting the confidence to go from one step to the next. And Logan for months was trying to get me to send outreach emails and I refused because it was too scary. I didn't know how, I didn't know what to say. And so the start of the year, I was like, okay, I'm just going to do it. Who cares what the outcome is? At least I've done it. And I found a brand that I wanted to work with. I sent an outreach email. They're like, okay, we'll get back to you. So I just figured it wasn't going to happen. They got back to me and they said, we'd love to work with you. So I landed that 
And then they reached out to me again and said, we actually have this special thing that you'd be perfect for. Could you do this? And then could you do this other thing? So that one outreach email that I was scared to send turned into like three projects with this client. And now that I have that proof that I can do it and it will have a positive outcome, now I'm not scared to take that step. So it's just kind of taking these actions and proving to yourself that you can do it and that it will have a positive outcome. And sometimes it won't, but that's okay because then that's clarity and you just move on to the next thing. So we're, we're so conditioned to, again, like be this perfect thing that gets it right the first time. And that's just not how life works. Like take the things that come as, as contrast and clarity into how you can do it better or, or how you can do it in a way that's more helpful for you in the future. Don't just take it as a failure. Like, I just don't believe in the word failure. That doesn't, that, that doesn't resonate. It's not failure. It's like a learning curve. And if you can go and go through your business and through life with that approach, then things will just be so much easier and you'll just have like way less pressure when dealing with things. I love it. So, so powerful. And, you know, this is stuff that's just so good to dig into. And I just, you know, love being able to hear Joanna reflecting back and, and really, you know, helping you all see the journey on this stuff, because these things are not necessarily just like easy do the thing. We're going to, we're going to talk about the idea of setting achievable goals and actions next. So something that we see is when it comes to like setting actions and like the stuff you need to do, there's a big long list. Right? It's like endless. I've got it, we've got it, I'm sure, of like stuff to do, personally and professionally, stuff on the list to do. And it can be pretty overwhelming. That's often what we see is like, uh, you know, it can be full on. So what we need to do, especially on a day-to-day, week-to-week, is set ridiculously achievable actions. This is so, so important. Obviously, you need to set actions that are working towards your dreams, your vision, your goals, but actually getting realistic about what can actually be done in a day. Right. So what we often see is that some people like I have to do these 30 things today. They get to the end of the day. They've only done five of the things among all the other work they have to do as part of their business. And they feel like an absolute failure. I didn't get the 30 things done. Like who can do 30 things in a day when you've got other stuff you're doing as well? It's full on. We all, we all expect we can do a lot more. So actually getting really achievable going, OK, what are the what's the one thing I need to do today or this week? What are the five things to do today or this week? And actually going, ticking those things off and then, great, you've got more time. There's always plenty of other stuff to do. But actually a big part of this is getting really good. This is a skill, by the way. This is a skill. Taking action and like setting achievable actions is a skill that you need to learn and develop and grow in. And doing this is so, so important to actually setting actions that you know you can achieve. And this is something that all business owners need to learn in creative business is what can we actually get done? Early on, you're like, I don't know. I'm just kind of, there's a lot of kids. We get that, but people who have been in business for longer, they can get pretty clear on what they can actually get done, right? They can look at a task and be like, cool, that's going to take about that amount of time and getting realistic around setting super achievable actions. What we, what we see around this, this idea is that may feel like not a lot. If you get one thing done each day towards your creative business, or maybe it's five things, whatever that is, if you get one thing, that will build up. And in six months' time, you'll turn around and you'll, your business will look completely differently. You will personally and professionally be at a completely different space. And you're like, but they were like tiny actions that took me like, you know, half an hour, 20 minutes, 10 minutes each day, whatever it is. They build up. And as humans, we're not very good at seeing that over time, how these things build up. Because suddenly if you look back, wow, look at all these things I've done. But in the moment, you're like, oh, doing this one thing. A, I don't really have time for that. And it's not going to move my business forward that much. But collectively it will so you know i think this idea of action is super important what are your thoughts off the back of this one here joanna in, in terms of what comes up for you around this um i remember one time we had a call and i was bummed out because i didn't get our actionable um, items checked off and i was stressed out and i was really down on myself and you went through our document and you scroll back through the past couple months and you're like look at how much you've done already and i didn't even think about doing that. I was just so focused on like the five things that I couldn't even check off in the like a month or week or whatever that we had last met. And I was so upset. And you're like, no, you're doing great. Like you've just had a lot on your plate this week. You, you couldn't find time for it. Let's, let's look forward and, and keep going. And then, you know, add these to the list, or maybe you don't need to do these anymore. So Logan was really kind in terms of like, just teaching me to be nice to myself. Um, And I've also, I've done a whole bunch of different um, like checklists over the years. I've done it digitally using Notion. 
that was cool. I could schedule stuff, but like that doesn't work. If it's not in front of my face all the time, I'm going to forget. So I actually have gone back to like having my little notepad and my piece of paper and I write down what I need to do for the day. And like on my list is prep stuff for Logan's webinar. I have groceries on my list because I'm like, I need to do this or otherwise it's just not going to get done. And even when Logan was talking just now, I also realized like I need to make time for my business because often what happens with me when I meet with Logan is, okay, well, I did a lot of stuff since we last met, but I didn't do stuff in relation to my business. I did client work. I did personal work. I did stuff for social media and I didn't have time for myself and what I want to do for Wink and Wonder. And I've come to realize that like over the last couple of months, like really scheduling in, it's just as important as client work, your business stuff. And just as important as being on social media is like the business stuff. So right after this call, I'm actually going to go back to our actionable items because I have a meeting with Logan later today and figure out what I can get done that is going to help me towards my goals. Because right now, um, and over the last couple months, I was just checking stuff off. That was what that was like client base, right? Work to work to work to work. And not necessarily like planning for my future in terms of like who I want to bring in and how I want to work and the, the offers I want to create and like investing in myself in that regard. I was just so focused on the money that was coming in and then making sure I didn't die off on social media because I haven't posted in like two weeks. So it's it's really helpful to figure out like where you want to put your focus and actually take those steps. And I remember Logan was like, okay, well, at the very like smallest, like what is the smallest thing we can do to get you to like have a little bit of momentum momentum on this? And he said, can you do some research? And I was like, yeah, I can do some research. So that'll take like five, 10 minutes. So he put it as one of my like five steps to complete in four weeks. And it was so stupid to me, but it was so like, as soon as I did it, I got to check it off the list and I felt so much better about myself. So even if it's like the tiniest thing, you just have to celebrate that win and don't like, don't just pile stuff on your plate that you, you aren't excited about accomplishing and really, really celebrate the stuff that you've been able to accomplish. Cause he's right. Looking back, looking back on the like six months I've been with Logan, I would not have done all of those things. Had I not had some accountability, had I not had someone checking in, had I not had someone encouraging me to take those little steps. So I, I'm really like a big proponent of like taking action, no matter how small. Amazing. I love it so much. You know, this, this stuff's so powerful. Being able to once again just, just hear these things and, and hear someone who's on this journey, just like all of you right now, is super, super powerful. Look, um, we've got one more thing we're going to share. We're going to talk about, oh, perfection. Just before we do that, what I'd love everyone to do is to share your Instagram in the chat. I'm going to share mine in here. Please share as a as a link like that. Don't just put your at tag because then everyone here can then follow you if they want to. Check out everyone that's on the webinar. Follow me if you want to. Um, this is a great way to, yeah, I just connect with an awesome community of cool, creative people doing cool stuff. So, so look, go to, go to a browser, go to your Instagram and paste it in there. Really, really, um, if you're ever on a webinar, by the way, don't ever put at tags because everyone has to copy and paste it and find you and you just, it just means they won't follow you. So always put this here. You can see everyone's doing it already. Click through, follow other people, see what awesome other people are up to on the webinar here as well. Um, and also follow myself and Joanna as well if you're if you're not already. You know, we'd love to connect with you. We always love um, you know hearing what cool people are up to and seeing your awesome work as well. Cool. So I'm going to take you through this next uh, piece, which is basically this idea of debunking the idea of perfection. Now, perfection is a hard word when we talk about creativity because what you're putting out there into the world, your creative work, is getting seen by other people. And if it's not really, really, really good you're going to get judged. People might say negative things. People might say you're not very good, all those things. And that's terrifying, right? Because it's, it's us. It's our, it's, our, it's our soul we're putting out there, right? Like, and this is a really interesting thought is that what we see is that we judge ourselves to be imperfect. So we could never put anything out there. We pretty much have to take imperfect action, right? So put out stuff that is not perfect. I'm not saying putting rubbish out there, right? When it comes to your creative work, your designs, I'm not saying just, uh, you know just chuck it up there and, and put some rubbish up there i'm saying no like yes take action create the imperfect version it's, it's near perfect but you're probably never going to reach perfection on these things one of the really interesting things about perfection is that the way to grow 
and the way to build your business is to put imperfect work out there so that you can get feedback on it. You can put it in front of real people. You can further develop your work. By actually getting things out there, you're going to get better. You're going to get feedback from the world rather than putting nothing out there and just trying to perfect things in your own mind, in your own house. Right? It's a really important part of the process. Now, once again, there's a blurred line here. It's sometimes hard to know where this line is of what's absolute rubbish versus what is perfect or imperfect. Right? And sometimes that's why we need others to reflect, others within our community, other creatives to reflect on what is the level of work that we see here. But what we often see is that most people actually don't think they're that good at what they do creatively. I have conversations with people all the time and I'm like, your work is amazing. It's so great. And you can totally build and grow a business that's going to earn this amount of money. And they're like, really? Are you, are you sure? And I'm like, I'm like, yes. Like we work with a ton of people with lots of conversations with people. And this is the trend that we often see. Look, yes, sometimes we say to people, look, you know, not quite up to a stand yet. Keep working on it. Keep developing your craft. But actually a huge amount of people we speak to are like, you're great at what you do creatively. We think it's the business stuff that's in the way. But actually you need to be, keep taking that imperfect action. You need to get the stuff out there and you need to take imperfect action on the business stuff, even when you don't feel like you're very good at it because that's what's going to help you improve as well. We are going to be jumping the Q&A on this, but I'll get um, Joanna to reflect back um, you know, on this thing here. So just start thinking about questions that you have just while Joanna's sharing. Um, if, you wanna, if you've got a question, you can pop it straight into the chat. We will be starting with the ones that were pre-submitted and then we'll go through as many as we can. So if you've got questions, fire them into the chat. Um, so yeah, we'd love to hear your thoughts, Joanna, um, around this idea of debunking the idea of perfection. Oh man, if I could, I, I, I wish I could record how many hours I've spent on like an illustration that were like totally unnecessary. And I remember years ago, Lauren Hom, um, if you follow her, it's like Hom Sweet Hom. She mentioned this. she was like, as, as um, an illustrator, an artist, especially if you like have a lot of experience, you will spend so much more time on like details that most of the public are not even gonna notice. And it's just you because you're conditioned and you have that eye. And uh, she said that one day and I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. And I have found myself, I will be like three hours into something that like is totally not necessary. And then, and then I'll finally feel in a place where like I can share it. Or sometimes, you know, I'll take a break and I'll come back and I'm like, oh, I can do this better. If you come back to your artwork and you think, oh, I can do this better, that's different than it's not good enough. I need to keep working on it. I need to keep drilling down. It's not going to be something that I can share yet. Like those two things are like different, um, different like energetic standpoints. If you, if you feel like something's miss missing and you can elevate it, it, that's different than I don't feel good enough. I'm crap at what I do. No one's even going to care who's going to comment. So you really have to like, when you feel those feelings of like, I'm trash and I'm not good enough, really sit with yourself. And someone had asked me one day, like, how do I know when I'm, when I'm successful? And I'm like, okay, well, what does success mean to you? So what does good enough mean to you? What does someone who's an artist, like, what does that look like to you? If it's someone that's producing artwork, you've already done it. So stop beating yourself up and just share it. Because the more you do artwork, the more you share, the more you take like perfection out of it, the more fun you'll have creating and the more time you'll have creating. But if you're so wrapped up in this idea of perfection, you're just, you're, it's a rabbit hole. There's no coming out of it because perfection doesn't exist. Something that I think is perfect, someone can look at and be like, oh, you could have done this. You could have done this. And things that I, I see other artists share, I'm like, well, I would have done it this way. So like perfection doesn't exist. And once you embrace that idea and kind of surrender to it and, and the fact that it doesn't exist and let go, then you can go back to just like having fun and exploring and playing and experimenting. And I think that's the part about like art and business where we we've, the older we get, it feels sometimes like we take the fun out of it, the whole reason why we start. So if you can find a way to get back to the fun and the creation of it and the journey of it, exploration, then it'll start to unfold in a way that's more like, more, um, I don't know, just more like beautiful and more in line with who you are instead of just, again, banging your head against the wall saying it's not good enough. Like that's just, that's just someone's, someone had mentioned that or you had picked that up from somewhere that's not even yours. So once you're able to like drop that, then then it's just 
and it's just you. You're an artist and you get to create stuff. I love it. You know, the, there's so much mindset stuff that we've talked about here. And I think people often think I need the, the tactics of what to do, how to do it. Yes, like that's part of growing a creative business for sure. But it's also this mindset stuff that we're talking about. It's not just as much of like, here's what to do, go do it. Right? It's the mindset shift that you need to experience, the belief in yourself, the confidence to do the thing, the confidence you can even build this thing in the first place. Right? And we see that. We see that within our first three-month program. A lot of people kind of come in there like, cool, like here's where I'm at at the moment. I'm not sure I can even get there to this place I want to go. So part of what we do is we want to get them to a point where they're like, okay, maybe I'm not there yet, but I know I can do this. Growing that self-belief is a huge part of that journey as well. What we're going to do, team, is we're going to jump into Q&A next. So um, once again, um, we've already got a question there. Thank you, Janie. That's, that's great to see that there. What we're going to do is we'll start off with the questions we were pre-submitted um, to uh, join us Instagram, which is great. And then we're going to dive into any questions that pop in. Um, just before we jump into those questions, a couple of reminders. One, this is recorded. Um, we will be sending out the link again for that survey that I mentioned for one of the three freebie calls um, with myself. And then, as I mentioned, we'll be giving some calls to uh, creative business strategist on the team, um, Paul, uh, creative business specialist on the team, Paul. But this is the link just again. So once again, this is going to be in the email we'll send out afterwards, all those good things. But, um, you know, we'd love you to enter that in. You're going to learn a bunch from filling in the survey and we'll be going through every single survey and offering some feedback, even if you don't um, get offered one of those freebie calls to myself or Paul. All right, let's dive in so checking my notes here the first question we were submitted which i think is such a great question do we need a lawyer to form contracts or we or can we do it on our own right so this is contracts in your in your business right do we need a lawyer uh the the blunt answer is no you don't absolutely need a lawyer uh is the best way to do it to have a lawyer yes that can also cost you Right, so if you want to have as much protection as possible and have every you know, A's, B's, and C's, all the things picked and covered, yes, you can spend money on a lawyer to customize and create a custom contract for you. It's going to cost a ton of money, and it's not something that we would recommend investing in at this stage. But you could, if you're really risk averse and you're worried, then yeah, that's the best way to get them full coverage for all risk. But the downside is you're spending all this money, which is also a risk. Okay, so that's the extreme end. Now, the really cool thing is there's lots of information online. There's lots of free templates. There's lots of templates that you can pay a small amount for, $20, $50, maybe even $100 for a contract that you can buy or once again get free. And then you can always modify it yourself, right? So you can go through and that's actually going to cover you for a lot. Once again, is it going to cover you for everything? Probably not because you're probably going to have to do, get a lawyer to do that. The other strategy you could use is you could take a template you could then meet with a lawyer and get them to review the template and it will probably cost you less to, to get their feedback than to get them to customize a whole template. But the straight answer is no, you do not have to, you do not absolutely have to have a lawyer, you just can, right? And as Joanne has mentioned in here, there's some great contracts and resources through the Graphic Arts School the Handbook of Pricing, I mean, Ethical Guidelines, right? There, there's amazing stuff there. So there's lots of places you can find online where you will get something. I do recommend you have something in place. Even if it's, you just get a free version somewhere and you start with that, you should really have some sort of contract in place to offer you some protection in your creative business. But once again, you might not be able to invest a lot of money to have the most perfect template. And maybe as you grow your business, you can invest a little bit more or have a better template as you go. I think it's an amazing one. Um, let's jump into this next question here, Joanna, and, and love to hear your thoughts on this next one too. Talk about pricing freelance work, right? So, the question is, do you price based on experience or effort, right? And Joanna knows from our program what I'm going to say already, and then uh, we'll get her to share any thoughts as well. Um, look, exp your experience and your effort, it's, it's part of it, right? Like, it's part of the reason why you can charge what you can charge. But I'm going to offer you a different perspective, everyone. You've got to charge based on what someone will pay you, okay? If someone will pay you, $200 or $1,000 or $2,000 for what you can do and what you can deliver, you can comfortably deliver that, charge them that. What we see people do is they start looking at what are they worth and what are their hours, how much time have they put in, what's the level of experience. Yes, I'm not saying ignore that. That's part of it. But firstly, what is someone willing to pay? Because this, this is an open market. If someone is willing to pay you $1,000 for something, you might say, well, I only feel like I'm worth oh, you know, $50 an hour. 
fine, I, this is only going to take me five hours. I should really charge this person $250. It's like, no, if they'll, if they'll pay it $1,000 for your value, charge them $1,000, right? And I get pretty passionate about the subject because this is an open market. You're not taking advantage of anyone. We hear this a lot, but I don't want to take advantage of anyone, Logan. And I'm like, we are, you're all creating amazing things for the world, but you're not selling essential medicine. That's different. That's taking advantage of your, you know, your trans elements and people really need this thing to survive and you're basically selling for a massive amount of money. I'm not going to get into that subject. There's a whole thing, a whole challenge in the world too. But, you know, I think just, just really think about that idea of what is someone willing to pay? We'd love to hear your thoughts around this as well, Joanna, because I know this is something, you know, you're always pricing work and, and figuring these out, things out too. Um, yes. So my suggestion is figure out what your hourly, hourly rate ideal hourly rate would be. So I base mine off of my full-time job. And so I knew that at the very least, if I work 10 hours at this rate, that's, that's pretty good, like time for money, right. Or money, money for time. However, Logan's talking about like the value you need to charge based on the value. And what I've found over the years, and I'm still doing it now, now that I'm aware of it, I'm not going to do it anymore, but I know that having worked at an agency and worked with like big clients, I know that there's people have money. Guys, people have money. They just don't want to tell you they have money because they want to save that money for other stuff. But there, there's always a way that they can pay you more. And maybe not the way that you have it in your head where it's this lump sum, but they'll, they'll if they want to work with you, they'll find a way to pay you. So one example is I had a client reach out to me. They wanted like three things for 850. And I was like, well, that's a lot of work. So I ended up negotiating through a series of things like two thousand dollars for what they wanted and made it in a way so that that work was more um more streamlined so less work for me and more money and they agreed to it they came at me with 850 and i got them to agree to 2000 i'm doing like less amount of work so it's not like these people don't have the money i've also found that when it comes to maybe small businesses or individuals I'll start negotiating on their behalf, which is like not what you should do. So if someone says, well, I only have like, uh, like 250, I know that my fee is at the very least for what they're asking, let's say a thousand, but in my head, I'll start talking myself down. Cause I'm like, oh, they can only afford 250. I would normally charge a thousand. Maybe I'll start coming down and meeting them where I think they can meet me. That's not what you should be doing. You have all this experience you can execute what they're looking for because they came to you. And if this is your rate, this is your rate. There's no reason why you should bring yourself down. Negotiating is a different thing. You can say, well, I would charge a thousand. They say, oh, well, I can go up to here. And then, and then you can negotiate because then they're meeting you somewhere closer to where you are actually worth. But I have found that I still do that. And that's something that I would highly encourage you like not to do. Don't negotiate against yourself. If you have a rate and you set that rate for a reason, stick to it. And if people can't meet you, that's okay. There are a bajillion people in the world. Someone will find you that is, is excited to pay you for your time and is willing to pay you more. So once you like find that belief that says, well, I'm not worthy of charging the amount that I think I should charge. You can just kind of like disentangle that and realize that's, that's not true. And you can prove to yourself that you can attract clients that are willing to pay. There are a bunch of clients, as many as there are artists, there are so many clients that are willing to pay you what you were. So really invest in yourself and believe in yourself and believe that you're worthy of charging it. And once you land some of those clients, it'll start to snowball and you'll have more confidence in saying, no, nope, this is my rate. Sorry, you can't. Um, sorry, you can't meet my budget. If your budget ever expands in the future, please, please reach out to me again. I'd love to work with you. Oh, I can so keep talking powerful. about this forever. <laughs> it, it's, it's, you know, this, this is powerful stuff. And I think it's, I think it's stuff that people don't talk about enough as well. Right? It's, it's, it's the stuff that kind of people hold close to like how, you know, how they do these things. But like, this is such an important point. Just because someone says they have X budget doesn't mean that's they have all they've got. It's surprising how often we see it all the time happening with our clients is they're like, well, you know, this person said I've got 250. Actually, they can get usually access to more money. Part of your job is to help them see your value and understand it. Because a lot of them, they might have never worked with someone like you before and have no idea what it's worth. And part of your job is to help them see how valuable this service is and how you're going to help them and what it looks like. Yeah, go for it. I, I will say the more you can price where you're actually worth, the more you're helping everyone else in this industry. 
Because if you start lowballing, then someone else won't be able to charge the amount that we're supposed to be charging for our work. So just try to keep that in mind when you're pricing things out. Like if, and again, that pricing and ethical guidelines book is a really good baseline because it gives you parameters as to what people have actually charged. And don't be afraid to like reach out to people and say, hey, I have this, I have this project coming up. What would you charge? And if people don't want to talk about money, that's on them. That's not on you. But it's totally, we, we need to like open up these barriers to talking about money in our industry because it, it but we're not like dentists and doctors. You don't go to a dentist's office and negotiate like what the price of a filling is. But for some reason in our industry, because it's creative, people feel like they can negotiate. But once all of us get on the same page as to what things should actually cost, and obviously that changes with like your region and a country you're from. But once we can agree on like what the baseline is for how much things cost, then clients won't feel like they can push us around. So it's really important to price what you're worth and price for the value of projects. And just keep that in mind when it comes to like thinking about the, the broader community in general. I love it. So, so good. Look, we're gonna keep moving through these questions. Um, Janie, we're gonna jump into your question next since you're here on the call and then we'll, we'll go through some of those other Instagram ones. So um, the question that um, Janie asked is, how do you know what to focus on when you feel pushed in multiple directions? Right, and yeah, totally get it. Like every, most people feel pushed in multiple directions. There's so many things we can do and things we, that we think will help grow our business. This is where we've got to take that step back and get clear on what we want and what are our top goals. All right, there's going to be a whole lot of things on our list that are just kind of extra stuff that we think might move us towards our goals. But when we look at our actual goals, we go, hey, how's that even connected? Right, so it's kind of that idea of taking inspired action. What, uh, what is the stuff that is going to move you towards your goals? Now, if, you, if you're like, well, Logan, I don't know what, your, what my goals are, that means you need to get clear on your goals. So something I already mentioned was most people aren't super clear on what they want and what their goals are within their, their creative business. They're like, oh, I kind of want to grow it. It's like, well, let's get a lot more specific because then you can align those actions that are going to get you there the fastest as well. Now, obviously, there's going to be other elements to that. But it's really looking at what, what do you want and what's going to get you there. Let's focus on those things first. Something we, we do, we actually do a whole um, section on productivity in the program, in our, our first program. And something we talk a lot about is this idea of urgent versus important actions. And, and like these ideas of this, these, these going to be stuff where it's urgent, it's important, it's client work, you have to get it done. It's probably going to get done. Sometimes we're trying to avoid it. It's another whole thing. But then there's all this stuff which is like not urgent, but it's super important. Posting on your social media. Look, it's not urgent. If you don't do it today, the world's not going to end. Your business ain't going to close. Right? But if you don't do it, over time, you're going to notice that your business is not going anywhere. Right? And social media is just an example. There's lots of other ways you can grow your business and market it. But it's an important action. A lot of the marketing stuff is very important for the growth of your business. It's just not particularly urgent. So part of it is also just noticing the different types of actions you have. There's going to be things where it's just like, they're important, they're urgent, they're going to get done. Oh, there's enough urgency there. There's a whole list of stuff, which is like, oh, if I don't go today, the world won't end. But how do we make sure we're focusing on those things as well? There's a lot of strategies, getting it on your calendar, accountability, all of those good things around that. So I think that's a really interesting one um, as well. Hey, I'll jump into this next question, which is directed at you, Joanna. And I think, you know, kind of off the back of the pricing stuff here. Um, so Joanna, when did you feel confident actually asking and receiving payment for lettering? Um, and they shared that imposter syndrome and knowing where one's work is good enough uh, to ask for a fair wage. Just, yeah, love to hear thoughts on that from that question. Um, I never felt if, so because I had a full-time job and this, this wink and wonder thing was on the side, I had the, the ability to say no when people came in. So if someone said, hey, could you do something? that usually entailed they were going to pay me for it and I could say yes or no. So that first job that I mentioned at the beginning of this call, I had a really big stationary company in Venice, California. I'm not going to name them, but if you figure out who it is, um, they reached, they put a call to action for a lettering artist designer to create this thing for them. And so that's a year after I started Wink and Wonder and I submitted my information in my portfolio and they said, oh my God, we'd love to work with you. I had a meeting with them. We started talking. And then I realized like in the meeting, we didn't talk about budget. So I sent them an email and I said, great, this is what I would normally charge. And they said, whoa, we were just thinking this would be exposure. And I like just instant like fire. Like I just felt like I felt so manipulated. They had met with me. They knew I was a, a, a female freelance, you know, 
illustrator who was trying to start their own business. It was a female owned stationary company and they were just going to pay me an exposure and their Instagram didn't have like a bajillion followers. I was so upset. And I just listed out like, this is what I'm worth. This is, um, this is, I, and again, I did the, this is what I'm worth. This is, and they said, well, this is what we can pay you. And so we negotiated from there. And I still took the project on because it was my first client, but you should absolutely not do work unless you're getting paid for it. I have done work for friends. I will do trades. I will do a discounted rate for clients or friends whose projects I believe in. Um, so it, it just kind of depends on where it sits with you. And if you feel like, you know, this discount could benefit this project. Maybe it's a nonprofit. I've definitely donated my work. There were kids in Southeast Asia that reached out to me saying they wanted to start this like nature conservatory thing and they needed the logo and could I do it for them for free? And I really had to sit with myself and think, can I do this for free? And what would that mean for me? Like how much time am I, am I investing in it? What am I actually giving them? How many rounds of revisions am I going to let them have? do I have full creative control or do I just do whatever I want, like do whatever I want, give it to them and say, good luck to you. And so I, I did the project and I, and I just chalked it up to like, that's my good deed for the year. And I'm happy to donate that for a good cause. And then everything else needs to be like a paid gig. Cause I'm going to pay my bills. So if, if people are coming to you, they should be paying you. That's just like bottom line for me. And if they can't pay you, then there are different ways where you can negotiate value out of it. Let's say someone, um, some like a friend of mine uh, does woodworking. So if I could, if she wanted a logo, I could negotiate like a side table. That would be an even trade for me. And I don't need the monetary trade because it's value trading for value. So it just kind of depends on like what you can provide and what value you're going to get out of the project. It doesn't always have to be money, but money is great. I, I love this. And I think, you know, one of the things we teach, there's a few clients on the call here and I'm going to see them definitely nod when they hear this, but like 20% of people should say no because of your pricing. Like they're like, you are way too expensive and that's okay. Now that number will vary, right? But my point here is that you should have some people who are outraged at what you're charging and that's okay. It's going to hurt. You're going to feel like maybe I should change my prices. Maybe everything's too expensive. Like, you, you know, they're, they're going to be very loud. You're going to really take that, that feedback on. But this is okay. It's actually okay to have someone and pitch the work and say what you're doing and how much you charge and it just doesn't work. And that's okay. We might get frustrated and all that and we go, that's fine. Send them off, right? So, and, and I see, you know, Andrew mentioned the story around this as well. I think so much on this um, within that. Yeah, Joanna, go for it. Um, I have another quick story. So I had Nickelodeon reach out to me to do this logo for Jojo Siwa and I thought, holy, sh holy shit, it's like Nickelodeon. I could charge like $60,000. And then I decided to reach out to um, a, a professional in the industry and say, okay, well, pragmatically, like what could I actually charge for this? And they said, oh, we've done a similar project. We charged, you know, this amount, let's say it's $10,000. We charge $10,000. Don't hope for more because it's a subset of Nickelodeon. So like be a little bit more pragmatic about what you're charging. And I'm like, oh, okay, fine, whatever. I still priced my stuff out. I still went above what they said I could actually get it for. And I landed like a $16,000 job. So had I listened to that person, I wouldn't have asked for more. And it's not, again, it's not my job to negotiate against myself. I wrote out all of the deliverables. I figured out what it would take for me to do the work and then what the value is and what I was providing. And I asked for way more than what I was told I should ask. And I, and I got it. So you really have to, it is like about believing yourself and the value that you provide. So I just wanted to tell that story because it's still like a gold star story for me. <laughs> it's, it's so powerful. It's so powerful, you know, to understand this. There is a lot here to this pricing stuff. Hey, everyone, really aware of time. I'm aware there's still a few more questions that we haven't quite got to, and that's okay. But what I would love everyone to do, I'd love you all to share one takeaway from today, right? What's one thing that you've learned? What's one thing that you've had uh, found really interesting? Maybe there's an action you're going to take. What's something you're going to do with what you've learned today? If everyone can share one thing in the chat, that would be really awesome. Really would love to hear what are the thoughts that have popped up, whether it's from the, the, the actual workshop itself or from the Q&A, things that have popped up. So let's see some of those things just before we wrap up. Do not talk yourself down. This is your right. This is your right. I love it. Absolutely, Andrew. Such a powerful thing. So, so good to be aware of. What other takeaways, everyone, just as we wrap up in the next minute or so? 
What are the other things you found useful, helpful, interesting? Don't let the client anchor you with a low price and negotiate against yourself. Stick to your value. Yes, Alana, I love it. Absolutely. Post on Instagram. You can post work and the progress stuff in stories. Yes. So that's a really good answer there um, for um, Andy there as well around that. Posting stories. I love that. I'm already starting my everyday habits. I can be who I want to be now. Actually, yes. I love it. That is so, so good. Being your successful self now. What would your successful self do? Yes, spending time in the business is important. So many good things being shared here. Like honestly, just such a good webinar. We are going to be wrapping things up, but we've just loved connecting with you all. As we mentioned, this is recorded. We're going to be sending everyone the recording. The link will be in those emails as well around how to apply for that, that freebie, freebie um, coaching session with myself. Um, which is fantastic. So we're going to wrap things up. But this has been awesome, isn't it, Joanna? Just amazing to have everyone this was, here. This was fun. I could keep talking for like hours and hours about this stuff. And I, I'm super glad you guys are here because I would have been scared to join a webinar when I you know, was first starting out. And like, this is why we do it because we have all of this experience and I am so happy to share. And I know Logan is too. And we just have so much fun going back and forth. And you know, I, I hope you guys got value out of this. I really enjoy spending my time just giving this stuff away for free. Like this is really important for our industry and for being artists and creatives. So amazing. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone. We're going to wrap things up there. Have a lovely rest of your day and hope to connect with some of you down the track as well. Take care, everyone. Yay. Thank you. Awesome. Take care. Bye. <laughs>